My name is Chase Moore. I'm the Executive Director of the Historical Society. Thank you for attending today. Um, I want to announce uh, a tale of three school houses. Um, Pat Green, what we'll be talking about, African American history in the Sykesville area, the schoolhouse projects down there in Sykesville. That's August 15th. That's our next BLT. Uh, Lynn is close to finishing up the coffee, I believe, right, Lynn? So if you would like, uh, we have decaf and regular. Make sure uh, that you have some coffee. It's still brewing, but it's almost finished. We are honored today to have Ken and Marty Hankins with us, and I have some introductions for our speakers. Uh, Ken Hankins was born in Bluefield, West Virginia, and lived in a small town called Cucumber. In the early 1950s, he and his mother moved to Essex, Maryland, where she had gotten a job at the Martin Marietta Airplane Factory. Ken attended elementary, junior, and senior high school in Essex, and then went to, to Frostburg State Teachers College for two years, later transferring to Maryland Institute College of Art. During his early years in Essex, Ken joined the Boy Scouts, rising to the rank of Eagle Scout, becoming Chief of the Order of the Era. For many summers, he attended Boy Scout Camp at Broad Creek Scout Camp. In 1961, he attended Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. Following his graduation from the Institute in 1966, his family purchased the property known as Camp Silo. Ken and his family, and later uh, his wife, Marty, ran the summer camp for almost 10 years prior to creating their famed uh, pottery summer camp on the property. The rest, as they say, is history, and you'll hear the rest of the story during the presentation. But I also want to speak a little to uh, Marty's background. Marty Hankins is a retired technology teacher. Marty has been the business person behind the pottery, managing the accounting, bookwork, social media, website, communications, sales, and customer relations. Marty is an active master gardener, and is currently president of the Carroll County Master Gardeners, and works in the native four square and nine gardens at the historical site. She is on the frame of the Carroll County Public Library Board and a past member of the Carroll County Public uh, Library Board, and a member of the Carroll County League of Women Voters Executive Board, and Marty was recently honored at the state LWD conference as the Annette and Mountain Fund honoree. Marty and Ken have two grown children, two in-law children, and four grandchildren. Marty moved to Carroll County in 1972 to Camp Silo in Hampstead. And I have to say also that their son Matt serves on our properties committee and has been a huge help as we navigate the work that is going to be done soon on the Shelman House. And I'm happy to report that we have received a letter of approval from the Maryland Historical Trust to go ahead and proceed with that work. And we're meeting with contractors next week to create the timeline. And soon, hopefully, you'll see scaffolding around the building. And anyway, Matt has been a real uh, help with that project along the way. So can we have a round of applause for the Hankins? Thank you. Um, appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. And um, but you've already done half the talk, so. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> and um, don't look at me. You I'm not trying to turn around. Look at this. Okay. Oh, okay. We're not very organized, or I'm not. <laughs> Marty set up all this, did all this, and she just told me to show up. And um, so I'm here. But my start was that I, my pottery career started because I was born in Bluefield, West Virginia. Speak up. You can't. Okay. <laughs> I was born in Bluefield, West Virginia. That's what, because I was born, I was able to become a potter. But um, we lived down in uh, West Virginia, in Cucumber, and my mother came up here as a Rosie the Riveter to Glen Oak Martin plant. And uh, then after I was born, she, um, I think I was a three-day pass in Arkansas sometime, 
And um, then I came up here with my mother in the second grade and went through public schools in Essex and Middle River. Graduated from Kenwood High School and went to um, Frostburg State Teachers College. And then after they asked me to leave, I transferred to the Maryland Institute College of Art and um, where I received a degree in art education from MICA. Then uh, I started my career in Baltimore County teaching and about 1966, that's when I graduated, my mother discovered this property out here in Carroll County and um, we, we bought 50 acres for about $50,000. And am I staying with the slides? Yeah, you're okay. Okay. <laughs> and we started, it was a retired summer camp and um, we decided to run the camp. My mother had always done daycare, so, and I was in teaching, so running a summer camp was good, and being in Boy Scouts and Scout camps all the time, it was a natural for us to do. So we, we did the camp for about eight years. Someplace along there, um, that's when I uh, met Marty. I was teaching at, where were we? Hereford, Hereford High School. <laughs> Hereford, I try to forget. Hereford High School, and, um, Quit. <laughs> You're doing fine. And decided to go off to graduate school at Alfred University in upstate New York. It's a, uh, it's a really one of the great pottery schools in the country, at least then it was, and, uh, and I left it that way. So uh, we were there for about a year and a half, and we came back to Carroll County because we were broke by that time. I'd gotten a scholarship to go to Alfred. And that helped a lot. And then we came back. Look what's on the screen. What's on the screen? Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> Barf. Um, so we got married in 1971. <laughs> I remember, because I have it written down. And um, then, then um, Marty and I ran the camp for a couple years, which was pretty exciting. And uh, Marty was the cook, and she'd cook for maybe 50 some people. And in fact, one morning she cooked for about 50 some people. And then um, <laughs> Matthew was born around 10 o'clock. So, um, and so when Matthew came along, a little booger, we uh, I had to go find a real job because the pottery wasn't supporting us. And um, so I got offered a job at Garrison Fire School. Did I cover things here? Well, this is Matthew's birth announcement. Matthew's birth announcement? Oh, far out. Marty, excuse me, but some people are having a hard time. You can't. You've got to speak into the microphone. Um, that's our birth announcement? There, but you've got to keep doing that. Okay, I made that up. And uh, who was the photographer? Phil Grout. Phil Grout. And he was working for the Evening Sun then on Main Street, and he did the pictures. Am I doing all right here? Yeah, no, you're doing okay. I just, you if you hold. point the microphone at yeah. your mouth instead yeah. of talking over it, that yeah. little people like here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, okay. <laughs> aim, it, aim it directly at your face. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I'll start over. <laughs> um, this is our birth announcement. I threw these pots. I don't know if you can... See what there are, there's a mama pot and daddy pot, and then the uh, pregnant mama, and then the baby was born, and then there was a father pot and a mother pot and a baby pot. <clears throat> Marty's mother thought it was disgusting, but other than that, <laughs> <clears throat> So, um, oh, he's threw me off thing. I, I've got a script that's not on here. Keep going. Okay. So, um, I got a job at uh, Garrison Farm School teaching pottery. And I was there for about eight years, and, uh, and we continued to live here at Shiloh, Camp Shiloh. We, uh, I, might, I want to point out, because we're talking about the Carroll County Historical Society, we've been here since 1966. And about that time also, we were active at the uh, Farm Museum, and um, and a lot of other activities. Uh, the, we were there almost every weekend that they had an activity going on. And our kids grew up running around the Farm Museum. I think the Farm Museum started in 66. So um, 
and it's not in the script here, but I wanted to point out that we were active in the county because we lived here, and we were in Carol Players. We did a couple shows with that. We did uh, September Song one time, and um, 4-H activities and the Scouts. In fact, my, our son Matthew went to Cub Scouts in this in this church. So um, we've been around the county, running around for a long time, and. Um, <laughs> After uh, teaching eight years at Garrison Forest, teaching pottery, oh, about that time I also got a job at McDaniel College, and it's called um, Western Maryland. Western Maryland College. Good thing you're here, Western Maryland College. <laughs> That's why I'm here? <laughs> and uh, I've been there. I was there 40 years, and then I was at Garrison uh, eight years, and at St. Paul's School for Boys, where I taught woodworking. I didn't know anything about woodworking, but I lied to get a job so Matthew could get tuition. And, um, but I managed to survive teaching woodworking with the little guys and no one lost any fingers for 25 years. So then, and then I've retired, retired from St. Paul's and from McDaniel College. Um, well, before you go on. Before I go on. Well, you can talk about the studio tours. The studio tour. Studio and the, tours. And the, we, um, we were instrumental in the beginning at starting the Carroll County Arts Council back in 73 when the State Board of Education came in and said uh, they had some money, they wanted us to start a program. So a bunch of us showed up over to courthouse and when we found out the money was not for us individually, everybody left. <laughs> and, uh, but we started up a program, Naomi Benzel was our executive director and um, we were all around town. We were in a closet here, or a little building there, and um, we were to Davis Library for a long time. We, Marty and I did a lot there, and then um, uh, a lot of stuff happened, and then we got the theater, and that's been a great asset to the community, the Carroll County you know, Arts Council Theater. So, um, I'm back to weekend shows. We're back to weekend shows. Okay. The, uh, we did start doing studio tour with the Arts Council, and we, we did an extra one with our open house on Mother's Day. So we did those forever, and um, we um, opened up a studio at St. At, 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 where were we? McGann, you know? Shiloh Pottery. I forget where I live. We uh, had open houses at Shiloh Pottery for all those years whatever that was, and then um, I have to slow down, you get track. Talk about your clay business. That's what's up there now. Clay business? Oh, we were in the clay business, weren't we? Okay. Yeah, we, we ran a clay business, a supplies. I manufactured clay. We had tractor trailers coming in and unloading them, and that's what destroyed my back. Uh, lots of clay, we were moving clay up and down a couple states here, uh, mixing up Pottery clay is, is pretty special, and all the potters had their own formulas. So um, we, we made up some formulas and we custom mixed clay. And we did that for a few years. And um, yeah, working out of our barn. <laughs> and we, we sold things, this is a picture of our catalog, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the potter's wheel. And the potter's wheel, and, and manufactured potter's wheels. And, um, Sold those all around, shipped them everywhere. I'm getting worn out. We did so much. <laughs> okay, we did the fish out of water. Fish out of water project. Do we have that up there? Mm -hmm. You're good. And uh, you need to stick to the script. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, the fish out of water project was a really neat thing. It was a mosaic, and um, it ended up down in Baltimore and in Inner Harbor covered a lot of this stuff. Place my business. And, oh, we, we, in order to do all this, we had a lot of help. Uh, young people who helped us around, who came and worked for us, and we, of course, we probably paid them, I think. But uh, Tom Starr, who's a potter up in Hanover now, in Diane. Uh, Mike Hardesty, who works here in the county. Uh, Willis Myers, who's up in Littlestown, a uh, really fine potter. David Warfield, who's over on the Eastern Shore in um, Vienna. Vienna, Virginia, up there. 
the end of Maryland, and uh, Stephanie Wilhelm, who was from uh, Carroll County, and now she's teaching up in Pennsylvania, and Nick Corso, who was with us about 12 years, and um, he's now up in Philadelphia with his family. Ben May, who's with us now, who's from Carroll County, he went to Westminster High School. And um, these are all people who are now potters, except I think Mike is not. But Mike's daughter is the chairman of the art department at, at uh, the community college. So they kept that in the family. And all these people came and worked with us, and we, we tried to help them out because it was the beginning of their careers, and now they're still all potters. Don. Don and Diana. Rainbow pottery. Oh, Don and Diana. Mm -hmm. In Uniontown. What's her last name? <laughs> Berman, Don Berman, who's out in Uniontown. And uh, both of them took classes from me and opened up their own pottery. And then we had, uh, recently we had Wendy Miller and uh, Nancy Zeri, who have been uh, paid or volunteering to help us at the pottery. We also taught adult evening classes four nights a week. Before you mention okay. this now, the Chestertown Tea Party. Chestertown Tea Party, is that what that is? Is that us in costumes? <laughs> and uh, we did Chestertown Tea Party. We did a lot of shows on the weekends, about every month for several years, we would pack everything up and go stand out in the street and try to make people sell things. And we did pretty well with that for a long time. And it was a lot of work. The kids went along. Uh, different people helped us with that. And these are pictures of us, are still there? Mm -hmm. In costume at, at Chestertown, where, where Marty is from. She grew up on a dairy farm in uh, Chestertown. And I forgot to mention all that with the farm. Do I do that now? Not yet. Not yet, hold on. Okay. <laughs> we rehearsed this, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, adult evening classes. We did adult evening classes. Well, for, we're not there yet. Megan's crab. Marilyn's crab. Megan's crab. Marilyn did a mosaic crab. Megan, Megan is our daughter, right? <laughs> and uh, and I forgot to talk about th those two critters. Having kids, boy. Anyway, Matthew is now a preservation carpenter. Works in Baltimore. Married a couple of great kids, and um, has a degree in historic preservation. Megan. Um, went to Garrison Forest and to Middlebury and to Columbia and has traveled all over the world and she's an architect down in Houston. Again with uh, two wonderful kids and a very big giant of a husband and a uh, big guy. Crab. What's that? The crab? Did I, did I finish with the crab? Well, it's up there. <laughs> That's the crab up there. Megan working on it. Okay. Good. Yeah, that was down on Charles Street. So can I go back to uh, evening classes again? We're almost there. Okay, what are we doing now? Well, we're going to do the 2000 to now. The 2000 what? We'll do the classes, kids' classes. Kids' classes. We also had children's classes uh, on weekends, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, anyone who came along, we'd try to teach them. I uh, often said, if a rock stood still long enough, I'd try to teach them something. But, uh, we, we enjoy teaching, doing all that kind of stuff. And um, I have the gnomes up there. You can talk about the gnomes. No, oh, we, we did a project with the gnomes. I would put that red hat on and we, we, uh, the kids would make gnomes. We have, um, we have one over here that's uh, me as a gnome. And I know in the exhibit at the uh, Historical Society, we have a gnome, I think, in there too. I think this is the empty bowls. Empty bowls. That's with all the blue pots. Mm -hmm. We uh, also help out with em empty bowls when we can, and uh, the um, charity for uh, uh, soup kitchens, and that's run uh, a church up the road here. And uh, we get a lot of donated pots from people, besides what we give them. What are we doing now? Kids pro classes, toothbrush holders. Okay, toothbrush holders. That was a fun project that we made with the kids. A big face with a, a big mouth in it. And we put toothbrushes in it. I think we have one of those on exhibit over at the uh, Historical Society. 
So I, I came up with a lot of ideas with the kids because we only had like an hour to two classes with the kids. We did 10 kids at a time. So we, we made pretty, uh, pretty fast things. I had all these uh, jigs and molds and forms for them to work with. And um, they also got to throw a pot when they were with us. So it was, a, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun working with kids. And woodworking. And woodworking. We did woodworking classes with the kids at our farm. Uh, we did uh, birdhouses and toolboxes, uh, Adirondack chairs, and we did woodworking with adults also. <coughs> Can everyone hear me all right? I haven't put you to sleep yet? Okay. Um, then, uh, what are we on now? Special needs. Special needs kids. We talking about me? Yeah, we, I enjoyed working with special needs. Use that as a one-on-one -on -one thing. Uh, I can't remember who these guys are. Brandy, oh, yeah. Brandy, and Chloe. Brandy, Brand, Brandy, and Chloe. Yeah, you know, we they we have we had someone who had Downs, or we had a blind student. We had one young man who was in a wheelchair. You know, he had one arm, and uh, but you know we did it. We they come and play in the clay, and get dirty, and uh, it was fun. We did that one on one for a long time. Several of these guys. Adult classes. Uh, now I'm in adult classes. Okay. We did adult classes. <laughs> um, who was here? Doug and Deb back there. They were in my class. And uh, Alvin, were you ever in my class? No, good. And. Uh, <laughs> pardon me? I knew better. You knew better. Okay. That's right. Your wife, Kathy, was. Yeah. And Alvin. Over here is a, is a blacksmith, and he used to come to our open houses and demonstrate blacksmithing. Um, where am I now? Postcards. Postcards, yay. We have a bunch of postcards over here on the table. We hit upon the idea of putting out postcards. We had to advertise our open houses and uh, whatever. We, so we made up stupid postcards. And of course, I got to be the center of attraction. So we, um, we sent out, we lost track of how many. Ken looks like Santa Claus, so we took, took advantage of that. <laughs> oh, I didn't ever knew that. <laughs> so, um, is that it? Oh, well, there's Nash. lots of postcards. Lots of postcards. Tell me when you're finished, I'm falling asleep. You can talk about the postcards. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> that one got me in a lot of trouble. The fifth graders at St. Paul have got a hold of that, and boy. <laughs> that's a snake bite. Oh, that's what I got bitten by a snake. So, um, and I actually did get bitten by a snake in, in the barn while I was shearing sheep. And uh, so when I went back to school, I tied a fake snake to my leg and went back to teach. And the headmaster said, enough. So anyway. There's a gnome. There's a, a gnome. That's a clay gnome that I made of myself, of course. What are we doing now? Green man. Oh, green man. That's my face. What do you want to do? I put my face on a lot of things. You know, because... And Harry people, Potter. Harry Potter. People were coming there because of the pottery, and so I had to... Well, anyway, if you have it, you flaunt it, right? I put my face on, <laughs> on, on everything. Did we do the arch? No. Oh, okay. Not yet. But the ornament. Oh, and those are little ornaments that I made up for, for Christmas. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> What's that? The Kennehead. Oh, I, oh, the Kennehead, yeah. We couldn't get the... That grass stuff to grow on the outside of the pot, so we had to Photoshop it. But you know, whatever. Oh, and Cooper. Oh, and that's our that's our puppy Cooper, and uh, he loves to have people come around. He needs somebody to chew on. But he's really friendly. Well, this is one I had a, one of the college students, McDaniel College, drew that as a cartoon of me as Superman. Ta -da, ta -da. And, and 
truck. And my truck. That's my 53 Chevy, my toy truck, and uh, we get that in as many pictures as possible. And uh, these pictures are all taken by, well, Ken Coons took a lot of pictures, Phil Grout took pictures, uh, Marty took some. Megan did some. Megan, our daughter, did a few. So, you know, we, we had all these projects. It was, um, it was a lot of fun coming up with the pictures. I made a pumpkin costume and sat out in the middle of a big pumpkin field one time. Oh, those are the trees we made a few years ago. Uh, we didn't make them that large, but they were little trees. <laughs> and then it's COVID. Oh, then COVID hit. Dun. And we know what that's all about. So we, we lost all of our classes. We had to close down the studio. We had over 20 some people, adults. And um, we said, go away and uh, don't breathe on us. And then we, um, all of our kids' classes, I think that the day we closed, we had some Girl Scouts coming and we disappointed a lot of people. And we still get phone calls asking for classes. But um, COVID hit and then right after COVID, I had uh, spinal stenosis and had to have uh, rods and screws and turnbuckles and all kinds of stuff put in my back and uh, that really wiped me out for a whole year and then I got sick again which is what's bothering me right now that's why we're sitting because I got some kind of a stomach thing and uh, I'm not very stable so we just decided that's it Shiloh Pottery is finished well we're not quite there yet. we're not there yet no. I'm, get, I'm getting tired so we did virtual shopping we did virtual shopping that was you Okay. Marty's a computer, computer person, so we sold a lot of stuff online and uh, our production picked up because we didn't have kids around or adults around and we just worked in the studio for a while. And the outdoor space. And we, we built an outdoor studio for COVID so that uh, we could have everybody outside in the open. And the county uh, helped out with the funds for that so that we have a small business loan to, um, to build that building. Now the farm. And now the farm. We, we bought a farm, this, we bought a Shiloh Pottery, which is called Camp Shiloh, then, which was a kosher Jewish camp. It was deserted for a long time, and since 1930. And so we, we ran the camp for those eight years, and then we've lived there for 50 some years. And um, what pictures that man? That's the gate sign. <clears throat> And that's us again with the puppy. <clears throat> We've gone through a lot of dogs. You got a lot of big dogs, which is great. He's, a, he's a, one of our kids now. These are just pictures of the farm. Just pictures around the farm as we're walking around Redbud. And uh, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. And we put in a wildflower pasture up in the field. So we, we have a grand time wondering what's coming up next. A lot of weeds this year, so we're going to figure that out. Now, a dogwood. Our uh, symbol for our pottery is the dogwood, and um, dogwood flower, and we do a lot of that too on things. So in my pots, I put a dogwood flower on the bottom of them, and if I have other helpers, apprentices helping, we uh, <clears throat> we put their names on the bottom of everything. There's the arch. <clears throat> There's the arch. That's the arch. I built that a few years ago. Those are clay boxes all stacked up. And, uh, and of course, it's got my face at the top. And I keep telling everybody that I had to build a monument for myself because no one else would. So that's out in the wildflowers. Rainbow Bridge. And that's our rainbow bridge. That, uh, I painted that up. We, that bridge has been there since the camp. Before we came to the camp, there was a bridge there. And then the the, uh, uh, the Tory Arch behind it. I built that when Marty went to Japan with a school group. I didn't go along, so I stayed home, and uh, to stay out of trouble, I had to build something, so I built a, a Tory Arch. And uh, then she went to Egypt one year, and I built a pyramid up in the field. So. Uh, and the greenhouse. And the greenhouse, that's right, too. I bought her a greenhouse for her, her, her birthday last year. And, uh, that's been an ongoing project because Marty does all this gardening garbage, I mean stuff. And um, 
So she's out there every day in the greenhouse. And just pictures of the barn. Pictures of her barn. The barn was, uh, you know, all, our house is, do we see the house? The front of it. The front of it is 1850s sort of house and um, log and stone. It was deserted also when we moved there, when I moved there. And then uh, we had to put new windows in, doors, floors, walls, everything. And, um, and we had to do all that because our son's a preservationist, I think. But um, then the barn was, we, we, milked, we milked a cow for eight years. We did that back to the land stuff, you know, where we raised garden things and we had a cow. Uh, can I tell that story? <laughs> I don't know what story it is, well, but go ahead. <laughs> we were going to, because we were doing the back the lander stuff, we were going to do goats. And I had this goat that I couldn't control. I had to tie her to the ceiling in order to milk her. And that didn't work. So um, my um, father-in-law, Pop Pop, showed up one day with a Guernsey cow. And he said that no son, the kids, no grandchildren of his were going to grow up on goat milk. Because he ran a Holstein farm over in Chestertown. A little uh, Kennedyville. So we milked for about eight years, and uh, so we gave up on after a while. Marty was state butter champion for a couple of years. We, we did all kinds of craziness. We raised a couple dozen sheep. We raised pigs and uh, alpacas. And, do we have any of that up there? Uh, well, I, I went to solar panels. Well, solar panels. So I, I begged to get solar panels. So we have a big field of solar panels, which uh, if you're interested in them, ask Marty about them. I don't know anything about them, she won't tell me. But I think it, it offsets our electric by about uh, 10 months. So it's kind of nice to have up in the field. And um, the sheep can get under it and, and eat and also it doesn't take up too much of the field. Adirondack chairs. Adirondack chairs. That's one of the projects was to build Adirondack chairs. And we did a lot of those with the kids. And um, because our daughter went to Middlebury, where they have all these Adirondack chairs all over the place, uh, she wanted them for her uh, wedding reception. So we got a bunch of friends together and built Adirondack chairs to put out at the farm when um, we had her reception. I'm trying to get to the animals. Get to the animals. What animals do we have? Oh, that's the Tory Arch again. Just, I just painted it last week. Actually, I didn't. Uh, Eric. Eric painted it. And um, give it a fresh coat of paint. So. Chicken house. Chicken house. Well, one of the things I did when I was teaching kids was to do post and beam buildings. Matthew did one to start with at our pump house. And then I started doing them with fifth graders. And we got big beams. We, we bought them at the uh, lumber yard. And we came back and we did post and beam construction. And one of them was a chicken house with a round door. And uh, we've had it quite a while. And then we have another building that's a playhouse for kids. And we, we got to the swinging bridge yet. We passed that. We passed the swinging bridge? Mm -hmm. Oh. We have a swinging bridge that goes from a tree house I built. I've always built tree houses. I had one at my mother's nursery. And we built them at uh, Camp Shiloh. And then I built one for us. Mr. P. Mr. P. Everybody's amazed by him. He wanders around free on the farm, and he's fun. Sort of. <laughs> That's my uh, garage workshop. I built that big garage there to put my 53 Chevy in. Got it. There's a sheep. There's a sheep. That she's been being shorn, and um, that was one of the reasons I think we got out of the sheep business. It was just a lot of work, and uh, birthing them little babies and keeping them alive and whatever. I, I didn't really like the sheep, but I didn't like all the work. So now I have Hereford cows, <laughs> and they are a lot of work. And um, I had to put a corral up so I could catch them because they're a little wild. We have a new calf now who's called Whopper Jr. And he, he went for a walk through the neighborhood last week, but uh, the neighbors brought him back. And there's the studio. 
And that's the studio. Oh yeah, that's the studio. That was one of our old cabins that we fixed up as a studio. And do you have the addition we put on? Not really. What? We, we added a big studio on the side where we um, got a neighbor to cut down trees and salt the logs and we built a greenwood uh, building. And now the barn decorated for Christmas. The barn is decorated for Christmas. We redid the barn, covered it with wood and put new windows in it and everything. So it's kind of nice. We try to take care of it. It's part of our heritage. And we're really lucky, both Matthew and Megan and their spouses and all their kids come to see us all the time, at least twice a year. Well, Matthew comes more often because he's in Baltimore, but Megan comes at least a couple times a year. And, um, and we, we did fireworks this year on the 4th of July and they come for Christmas. And Megan is in Greece, Jordan. Who knows? France, uh, she's someplace. She's in Istanbul. We got a 17 page itinerary. She loves to travel and she and her husband and kids go. So um, they're there now as we speak. I hope. Chickens. Chickens. Oh, these are the chickens. We hit on this, I don't know, I started making chickens. How am I doing time wise? I think we're playing, we're probably playing. Okay, we start, I started making these chickens. I don't know why. I don't know why I did half the things I do. And um, so we made these chickens and uh, it's, it's in a mold, we press clay into it, and then we put all the feathers on them and I do the faces. And um, they've been, been pretty popular. We're still making them for people. We can't seem to stop. And uh, I, had, I had a nightmare last night. All night I dreamed I was making chickens. I kept making these four chickens over and over again. I, I didn't get any sleep. I don't know what that was all about. But anyway. Let's say about the faces, because you do the faces. I do the faces. Are we going to do that mm -hmm. face thing? Marty has made up a video of the, me putting faces on the chickens. I don't really do it that fast. <laughs> so are we finished? So we're talking about what you're doing now. What I'm doing now, oh, what am I? oh, that's what I started the other day. It, our dogwood flower is our symbol. So I decided to do a four foot dogwood flower. And so it, it's big. And I've just recently cut it up and see the lines through it. And when it gets really dry, which is gonna take another month, I, we fire it one time, which is called a disc firing. And after it's fired, we glaze it and fire it again to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then I'm going to put it out in the wildflowers. And um, it's just something to waste my time with, seeing how I don't have students and adults to teach. And um, I don't I guess you, you've caught on the fact that uh, I'm not in the studio every day, even though I had the big back surgery and, and I still don't feel well in the morning and all, but I still have to get up in the studio and I go up every day and do something. Sometimes I just lay my head on the table. But otherwise, I uh, try to get something done. And um, clay um, has sort of been my life and, um, for, for a long time. And before I met Marty, I was doing clay at the Maryland Institute and in the graduate school. And then we've always been somehow involved in pottery in some way. And, um, at the uh, Historical Society, we, we have a display over there, and it's more of a timeline. You see the um, redware that I did for several years doing uh, redware. I made old kind of tools and made pots. We sold pots at the um, uh, St. Mary's City. We sold pots at a, a, the, um, some kind of historic farm and at the uh, Library of Congress and, I don't know, a couple of places. Then, then I got tired of redware, so we uh, switched over to uh, salt pottery, which is another really neat way of firing. And um, we did that for a while. 
and then we just stayed with the reduction fire, which is gas fire. And then when I had so many students, I had to switch to electric because it's faster. So I've built, I was trying to count them the other night, about seven or eight kilns, big brick kilns at the farm and burn them all up. Yeah, because they do get hot and they start to melt after a few years. So um, building kilns, wheels, making clay, teaching, I don't want to go through it all again. Uh, but you can see that we just kept busy all of our life and doing things. And it couldn't have been done without the support of Marty uh, cooking the meals. Of course, I had to wash the dishes, but she cooked all the meals and um, kept us going. Has I done it? Did you want to invite people to see the back? Yeah, I would. Um, oh, I forgot about that. This is a picture of the, the display at the Historical Society. We also invited famous people to our studio, famous My potters. Fa famous pot. Oh, missed. Famous potters to our studio. We had a couple of Native American Indians from Acoma Pueblo in New Mexico, and we have one of her pots and um, Byron Temple, some of, of course, my famous pots, and kids' pots and stuff over at the Historical Society. So you should stop in. They're labeled so you know what they are. And I can talk to you about whatever the garbage is, whatever the beautiful stuff is that I have over there. And, um, Why don't you just say what it is and we can walk over. I don't know how to I don't know what's over there. Oh. <laughs> well, there's postcards and there's pots, and, and I, I think we're ready to move on. And I'll be around to help with questions. Yes? We can do a Q and A. Okay, good. And then we can move this so that what, can, what does that mean? A question and answer. Oh. <laughs> but if you go into that, then I can carry the mic around for the, for the <laughs> question. Okay. All right, good. He's nice to have around. Mr. Ken, I think you're absolutely fascinating. <laughs> I enjoyed your speech. Yeah, one thing I'd like you to tell me about, you mentioned about a recipe for the clay. So I always thought you just got clay out of the ground and used it. Apparently you have to do other ones. Well, you can do that. And a lot of the societies did dig clay. I've done it in Carroll County here. Carroll County had a lot of potteries around. But Carroll County's clay is mostly red. Redware out at Tawny Town, you can see everything's red out there. But um, we, um, to make a clay body, we mix up a lot of different clays to blend it, blend it to come out certain colors, certain textures, and certain um, firing temperatures. So almost every potter has their own formula that they like. It, you know, it's just what they made us do at college. You know how they are there. Lady, you have a question? Here you go. Well, as I noted, you just invited everybody to come, that can I assume that, there, that every single household in Carroll County, at least, and well beyond, has a beautiful piece of shadow pottery. And uh, we, I always look at my beautiful pieces. My, I guess my favorite one, but I don't know, is this magnificent Bible that um, you made, and I'm so thankful. But um, in addition to your incredible pottery and all the uh, creative things you've done, I wonder if Marty could tell us a little bit about, um, you mentioned that she uh, cooks the meals, but as we know from Carroll County, not only does she cook, but she teaches us how to grow things. And talk a little bit about your work, if you will, Marty, with the tomatoes. Wait a minute, this is about me. Okay. <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. 52 years. <laughs> um, you're going to make me cry. Um, it does take a team, and um, we I, um, I do garden, and I, do, I am an activist. Jason didn't say that part of my bio, but I am an activist. Um, 
And I do love to cook and I love to can and I love to freeze, but, um, and Ken likes to eat, so it's a good combination. <laughs> But we have been doing this together um, for a very long time, and um, we have been a part of this community for a very long time, um, and we really, pre really appreciate that. So thank you, Lynn. Well, how did you get into heirloom tomatoes? Well, um, I've always had a garden. My dad and I um, had kind of a, I, I was always trying to get one ripened by the 4th of July. And I've never been able to do that. Um, and then um, I, I don't remember actually um, how I started, but I've been always growing tomatoes. I grow tomatoes. In Carroll County, they grow tomatoes. I grow tomatoes in my garden. And I discovered, maybe it was through Master Gardeners before I became a member, that I could grow heirloom varieties and save the seeds and then grow them again next year in the following year from the seeds that I had harvested. And so I started doing that. I didn't bring a brochure because this is all about Ken, but the Master Gardeners has an heirloom tomato festival on the 19th of August. Uh, it's a Saturday, it's at the Carroll County uh, Extension Office where the, farm, where the farmer's market is. And we will have between 30 and 50 varieties of heirloom tomatoes that you can taste. You can gather the seeds. We teach you how to save the seeds. We'll have food made from tomatoes, like cakes and pies and um, appetizers that you can see and taste at that festival. And we'll also have recipe cards of all the recipes. So I've been saving my seeds for probably eight or 10 years. And I just yesterday harvested one that was like this big, uh, my first big heirloom of the season. It's an ox heart, and the ox heart seeds came from my plants that I grew last year. So um, if you're, if, how many people have a garden? How many people grow heirloom tomatoes in their garden? All right, good. So come to the festival and you can try some different varieties. I also, um, Ken said I was the butter, butter uh, champion. I was also the pickle champion because I grow uh, cucumbers and make bread and butter pickles from a recipe I got years and years ago from a friend. And one year, I won not only a blue ribbon for my pickles, but I won grand champion for my pickles. So I was dubbed the pickle princess, <laughs> the dubious honor. And then somebody from Howard County beat me, and I, that was the end of that. But I, so it was a very short reign. But every three years, I make pickles. This is not a pickle year. Um, I make pickles every three years. And uh, we have various vintages. I think we're working on the 2022 vintage of the pickles, 2021 pickles. So. Well, you are an amazing team. <laughs> and here, uh, Bill has a question. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned the red clay and the red pottery, and you can think of Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, are there historic influences that you had in terms of develop, developing styles and so forth? <laughs> or is that impossible? Well, no, I mean, you know, I've been doing this over 50 years, and there's all kinds of influences I've had from potters. I mean, uh, I spent a few summers at the beach, and I met a couple potters there in a craft shop that I worked in, and that kind of got me started on it, and the type of pots, I made more Scandinavian pots, uh, Byron Temple, and, um, but then as you go along, you just have to try new stuff. And uh, I tried redware because I, I, I kind of liked what it was, and it was a history thing. And it was the kind of stuff that was done here in Carroll County. Almost every town in Carroll County had a potter. And um, so I wanted to do that. We did some research at the library at the Historical Society and found out about the different potteries. And then, um, then the salt glaze stuff, that was a trend that got going, and we built a salt kiln. And a lady down in Owings Mills came out and helped me build one. And that was fun for a while, till it melted. And, um, and then uh, we, we have a wood fire kiln also. Uh, who was it? Nick. Nick, Nick Corso built a big uh, wood fire kiln, a two chamber climbing kind of kiln. And, um, and it's still there even though Nick is gone. 
and um, and that was fun to have a wood fire kiln around and I built one for myself too so um, all these influences as you go along through this sort of thing because the pottery is so extensive in what you can do uh, you mentioned the pottery from Akuma Pueblo um, did you exchange any thoughts ideas with them? well um, I went to see, see them do a workshop up in New York City at the West Side uh, YMCA, and um, I really liked what they were doing, and it was two grandmothers. Their mother um, was pretty world famous, and there's books out about her and stuff, uh, Lucy Lewis. So um, I started talking to them. We all went out to dinner in Chinatown, and we were talking, and, and I said, would you come down to McDaniel College and do a workshop? And they said, oh, we'd love to do that. They love to go all around the country doing workshops. So they came down and we did pit firing, which is with, with uh, cow dung. And, um, but she didn't like our cow dung. And Carroll County cow dung is too juicy and green. She wanted, she wanted to dry stuff from the, from the prairie and the desert. So uh, they shipped it out here and um, we, um, we, we made pots at the McDaniel and fired them up in front of Davis Chapel. And so, um, you know, that, it was neat. In fact, we went to Akuma. Marty and I went there after that, and, uh, but they wouldn't let us visit them because they're, they live up in a, on a Pueblo and where um, it's all religious and you're not allowed to be bothered there. But I have their phone number and I used to call them at their house. So they were just like everybody else. They shopped at Walmart and stuff. So, um, but it was it was a neat experience. Here we have one here. Uh, Marty. Hi, Karen. Hi. I want to thank you for sharing so much on Facebook with all of us. Your produce, your recipes, and especially. Your tomato with the left. <laughs> oh, yeah. So keep doing that if you can. I hate microphones. Can you get it? Yeah. Just, I think you told me you weren't a baker, but you made that and were successful. Karen's talking about it's like a rustic pie. You make a pie dough, and then you put cheese on the pie dough, and then layer various colors of, of heirloom tomatoes, red ones, I mean various colors layered on top and then um, bake it. Oh, it's so good, I can't wait. And then at the very end, you put, did you put the lemon zest on it? Yes, you sprinkle lemon zest on it. It is so good. I'll share the recipe with Jason and then he can post it. Um, but, it but it's really good and I make that in the summer when the tomato harvests are in. And you can make it with tomatoes, too. I think it works just as well. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, can, oh, can you have something to say? No, well, okay. I was going to say that Marty, when we first were married, was cooking on an old uh, wood stove, a cook stove. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, we had a kid on a whoop, 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 whoop behind it. And um, so she's always been cooking something weird, st different ways. Well, you two are truly an amazing, talented team, and uh, your getting together is definitely a harmonic convergence, and we have been great beneficiaries for over 50 years of your talent, energy, humor, advocacy, and so many, many ways you have touched our community. So best of luck to you as you head into the next half century, and thank you very, very much. Thank you.